Hey beautiful people. So today I'm going to be clearing up why there's so much confusion with product recommendations, advice for locks, just the reason why it's so confusing when somebody says do your research and then you come up with more questions than answers. What I found is that there are four different types of philosophies of hair locking and each different philosophy has its own ideals about what products to use, how to maintain your locks, and really how your lock lifestyle goes. So I want to share these four philosophies with you in hopes that this will help to clear up any confusion you may have, help you identify which philosophy you better relate to so that you can make the choices that you want to make for your lock journey. The first philosophy I want to talk about is the man-made philosophy. This philosophy of hair locking really believes that the creator has to actually make the lock and that your hair will not actually lock on its own. So with this philosophy, you use a lot of accessories like rubber bands, you sew the locks together, you use a lot of clips. Um, there's a lot of interlocking and crocheting and, and let's not even talk about latch hooking, but they typically use a lot of these methods to make the lock and for products, the product recommendations often include beeswax, holding gels, brown gels, really heavy products that will essentially force your hair to stick together. Oftentimes I hear um, not to shampoo your hair until your hair actually locks um, because applying water will um, impede on the locking process. So this is really the man-made philosophy of hair locking. The next philosophy I want to share with you is the stylistic philosophy. This is really for hairstylists that mainly do loose natural hair that also just say, hey, locks are hair too. I do locks as well. And so with this philosophy, oftentimes the person that's creating your locks will use creamy products, um, will use products that they just use on loose natural hair and use them on locks as well. And sometimes they're unnecessary. So there are things like detanglers or hair softeners that are used. And that is where you get people saying, oh, your hair texture is too soft to lock because they're not really trained on locking your hair. They're just trained on general hair care. So that's the stylistic um, philosophy for hair locking. And then you have the, I like to call the laissez-faire philosophy of hair locking where it's like, Whatever works, if it feels good, if it if it's working for my hair, cool, until there's a problem, then I'll address it later. Um, there's not really a structured set of maintenance with this. Um, the product usage is just, you know, whatever I find, whatever I want to try now, and, you know, just because I feel like it. And then there's also, you know, random partings with this because, you know, you're lazy fair. You don't really, you just go, you're just going with the flow. And the fourth philosophy is the holistic philosophy of hair locking, where you, you believe in using the hair to style the hair, secure the hair. You're not really using a lot of tools. Um, the products are all lightweight and minimal because you believe that your hair will lock with time and that water is your friend. Water helps with the locking process. And when you start your locks with somebody that has a holistic approach to hair locking, your partings are created for maturity. So they are parted so they will fall really nicely once they mature. This is just a general overview of the four philosophies. If you want to learn more, make sure you head over to curlynewgrowth.com and check out the post, Philosophies of Hair Locking. And this is not to say that you have to be in one of these categories. It's just to give you an idea of where the philosophies fall. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any other questions, share them in the comments below and also let me know which philosophy you relate to best.